STV, votre télé. Jean-Claude Buenchu, Minister of Urban Development and Housing, has just launched a scheme to restructure and rehabilitate some neighborhoods in the city of Douala. In the West region, the use of arms without authorization has been prohibited for reasons and more in this news class. Televiewers, good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. A study to restructure and rehabilitate uh, some neighborhoods in Douala is on the way in Douala. The Minister of Urban Development and Housing, Jean-Claude Buenchou, has launched the scheme today in Douala, which brought uh, together urbanization officials of the Douala City Council, the Ministry of Urban Development and Housing, and the Urban and Rural Development and Equipment Authority, my two. Let's now get more on this scheme from the director of MITU, Louis Roger Manga. Uh, MITU has so far developed uh, a very high skillness in uh, restructuring this, the areas, such as uh, the Projet Nilon, uh, which was uh, drawn uh, 30 years ago. And uh, I know that you, you know these quarters. Uh, Oyak, Brazzaville, Nilon, Tergal, CCC, and so on. And uh, you, you see that they have uh, very improved, and now it is uh, somebody can easily live in this area because we have uh, water supply, uh, electricity, roads, and also some infrastructure, schools, uh, hospitals, and so on. And now uh, our aim is to develop some other experiences uh, in some other quarters of, uh, of uh, Douala. That means uh, Douala 3e, Douala 4e, Douala 5e. And the framework has uh, changed uh, because uh, now there are uh, uh, laws about urbanization, laws about decentralization, and so on. And now we are trying to implement the new urban ag agenda. From the Little Havre region, we take you to the Southwest region, where municipal authorities of the Dabatu Council in the Dian Division are requesting that government officials should create a military base in the sub-region to reinforce security. They were speaking recently at the end of the Ida Batu Divisional Officers Tour. More with Daniela Neba and Marcel Ito. Why administrative and traditional authorities of Ida Batu Subdivision have used the last laps of the Meet the People Tour of their deal to celebrate the peaceful coexistence between the administration and the inhabitants who are mostly Nigerians Municipal authorities, on their part, have requested the government, as a matter of urgency, to create a military base to implement government measures, which seems difficult for inhabitants to accept. They were speaking in a reception organized at a subdivisional chief town of Atabon in honor of the deal and to put an end to the recent rumor that created rift between the administration and the population. Plan this place well by giving us the security men like marine soldiers who cannot implement any institution yet. Speaking at the end of the ceremony, the deal Roland Ewane, like the spokesman of the Idabatu Chiefs Conference Chief Etsim Esim, expressed great joy for their population to have understood what they have been advocating, such as the respect of administrative measures and not to consider them as enemies. The unfortunate incident that some people lied, but they came back to their senses and they realized that uh, uh, the divisional officer is not an enemy, he's a friend. Everybody has now understood the policy. I'm here just to implement government policy 
and I've come to realize that he's a peaceful man. So I've preached around, I've gone around, talked to the people about the message of peace. All we need here is peace. The duo equally used the ceremony to call on Cameroonians to come and exploit the rich oil potentials of Idabato instead of traveling to other countries illegally. General Elokobi Daniel Jok is said to be the man to lead the anti secessionist crackdown in Manu Division. But the appointment is seen as controversial considering he is the son of the soil. Peter Susio reports. Defense authorities are yet to either confirm or refute the information. But unconfirmed reports say General Elokobi Daniel Jok is heading the massive crackdown on what the head of state describes as a band of terrorists masking behind a secessionist movement in the southwest region, plagued by the Anglophone crisis. Following spate of assassinations of men in uniform in Manu Division over the past week, about 2,000 troops are said to have been deployed to restore peace and security in the volatile zone bordering Nebori, Nigeria. At the helm of the delicate assignment is the Central Director of Coordination at the National Gendarmerie. If this is true, the 61-year-old has been handed a hot potato, considering that he hails from Manu Division. Born in the division's chief town, Manfi, on April 15, 1956, General Elokobi Daniel Jok is a graduate of the 1976-1979 promotion of the Combined Military Academy EMIA in Yaoundé. From 1983 to 1990, he was company commander at Choleri in Garwa. He holds a diploma in criminology from the University of Virginia, USA, and is a product of the Advanced War School in Paris, France. He was commander of the East Gendarmerie Legion in Betwa from 2004 to 2009 before being raised to Brigadier General on the 13th of August 2011. News of General Elokobi's controversial assignment has been received with mixed feelings in his homeland, Manu Division. Like mentioned in our headlines, the use of arms without authorization in the West region has been banned. This was announced at the second semester administrative and coordination meeting for the maintenance of order that held in Bafang. In line with this restriction, the law of 2016 related to the ban will be applied as well. The meeting was shared by the governor of the West region, our Fonka Augustine. Here is an extract of the governor concerning the ban. It concerns equally us because uh, there has been a few spillover effect with uh, students and pupils from neighboring regions that we had to absorb in our region during this uh, period under review. Execution of the budget. Despite all the efforts that we are making and uh, instructions from the hierarchy, we still find that uh, around the corner some uh, civil servants are still serving as, some serving as stumbling blocks in the execution of uh, the public contracts. We also discover that uh, there are some contractors who come up with uh, uh, very good and promising documents, but on the field. Uh, we don't see them really performing. And uh, we have a real problem with the issue of uh, some roads that have to be, that are being constructed and equally in the domain of, uh, um, in the domain of uh, some water projects. And I think uh, that's the two domains that have really pulled us down. But I think uh, measures have been taken to make sure that we overcome the situation. Take you back to the Southwest region where Southwest Governor Bernard Okala Bilai has encouraged the Tunisian company charged with the towering of the Kumba, a condo city stretch of road to speed up, to speed up works. Governor Okala Bilai was speaking at the end of his visit at the company base in small Ekombe. Daniela Neba once again. Southwest Governor Bernard Okalia Bilai has frowned at the Tunisian company Surubat in charge with the tarring of the Kumbai Kondo city stretch of road for the low execution of the project. Governor Bernard Okalia Bilai was speaking recently at the company's base in Sumo Ekumbe, Mehmet Division, at the end of his visit to inspect and evaluate the percentage of work done so far. The administrator noted that 43% of the project period has been realized already with just 8% being 
project execution. There was a, a delay because of the rainy season. The, the company is uh, promising by March, April to, to attain the 50% of the execution of work. So we want just to now appeal uh, the population of uh, the Southwest and mainly this area to create a safe environment for this work to continue. Governor Okalia Bilai used his visit to encourage the contractor to accelerate the work now that the rains have given way, urged the population to give the company the necessary support they need to execute the project. Officials of the Tunisian company, on their part, have held extension of the rainy season this year to be responsible for the law execution. The harbor promised to speed up work to 50% by April 2018, now that the rains have slowly given way. The traditional ruler of Simo Ekumbe, Chief Lawrence Kumbe, promised to use all necessary measures in Diapa to protect those in charge of the project. He noted that the tarring of the road will rescue his population from untold misery they go through traveling to other villages in the Division. The 60 kilometers road project is among the president's emergency plan projects from Kumba passing through Bonge to Ekundo Titi in the Division. Pupils and students in Douala have handed Christmas gifts to their peers who lost their parents during missions across the country. Uploading the gesture, the commander of the Second Combined Military Region has appealed for patriotism and unity. This was during the 32nd World Volunteerism Day observed yesterday. Peter Sosa. They are observing the 32nd World Volunteerism Day in a special way. Initiated by the literal delegation of youth affairs and civic education, these pupils drawn from primary schools in the Douala 1 and 2 municipalities are reaching out to their peers, whose parents died in various military operations across the country. We lift it over the radio and television, the effort that the Cameroonian armed forces in the frontiers are carrying out to preserve the territorial and national integrity. Unfortunately, many of the soldiers, gendarmes, military and police officers have sacrificed their lives for the protection of Cameroon and her children. Christmas is approaching and the act of sharing with these orphans has been saluted by administrative authorities in the region. I feel uh, surprised, but positively surprised. Surprised of, uh, of, uh, of the act uh, that uh, those children have just done concerning, uh, concerning their brothers who uh, have lost uh, their fathers. The commander of the second combined military region, General Salim Muhammadu, who received the gift on behalf of the orphans, has praised the generosity of the pupils, promising them that the military will continue its mission of protecting the nation. He has also implored them to draw inspiration from the bravery of the fallen soldiers to showcase patriotism and national unity in all they do. Sport football in this newscast, the news of the sacking of Hugo Boss as the head coach of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon is not true. This as the Belgian is yet to receive an official word from sports authorities. A letter from the Normalization Committee of Fika Food was leaked and is at the root of the fake news. Philemon Bale. A letter which had as destination the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education ended up decorating Facebook pages and other social network platforms. A decision by the members of the Normalization Committee of Fika Food aligning reasons for the non-renewal of Hugo Bros's contract at the head of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon. The information that the coach has been sacked, which of course is false, has gone out like wildfire, amplified by some local press organs. I guess the situation is quite abnormal because we are in a context where things are not moving like they should be moving. 
Uh, you cannot ri have uh, write the letter to your uh, hierarchy and the, the letter comes up out before, even maybe before you get to the, 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 the person to whom you wrote, you wrote it. Actually, the Belgian's contract is due for February 2018, but pundits say that the Minister of Sports and Physical Education still has the effrontery to favor the renewal of the coach's contract. Though this minister have uh, done things that can be done only by him, <laughs> like putting Tombi where he was not supposed to be, so, but I am afraid uh, for this case he will be unable to do anything. Um, once again, I'm saying it is because we are in Cameroon, but it is not to the Minister of Sport to decide who will be the head coach of uh, uh, football selection or the handball crew. Or, I don't know. No, it is not his uh, duty. So, in effect, the coach's contract, which ends in February next year, might not be renewed according to the proposals from the Normalization Committee of FICA Food. And so, Hugo Bros for the meantime, remains the head coach of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon, at least until February 2018. And that report done to us by Philemon Ballet brings, uh, takes us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Join Orian Duncan at exactly 7 p.m. for the news in the French language and Veronica Aji at 8 p.m. for the news in the English language. Good afternoon, thanks for watching and stay in the company of programs on ST. STV, votre télé.